Hello, welcome to another Revit MEP 2013 tutorial. Uh, this is Tyler Disney. I am the Revit guy at Integral Group's Oakland office. Um, uh, so a couple of weeks ago, I came out with a video where I showed how I uh, ha how I set up duct systems. It was basically the correct way to model duct systems um, using some of Revit's tools. Um, and some of the views I was working in looked somewhat like this, where the duct was colored and filled in according to the uh, friction loss in the duct. Um, and someone asked a good question, and that good question was, where did that view come from? Uh, so the point of this video is just to show how to set up that view. It's uh, pretty straightforward once you figure it out, but it definitely took me a few hours of poking around the internet to figure it out. So, I will cut through all of that for you. So, what I've got here is I started this. This is a new project from the out of the box Revit uh, 2013 mechanical template. So, there's nothing special preloaded into this. I just pulled in uh, two of my families that I have and I like, um, but there's, there's nothing fancy about them. I made this duct system. And tabbing a few times to see those relationships, um, but other than that, it's it's just straight out of the box. So uh, let's get to it. Um, how you set up the the um, sort of color scheme for this? I gave it away, didn't I? Is over here in the view properties, system color schemes. Uh, go ahead and edit that, and we're dealing with ducks. So go in here, and you see there's two. Uh, schemes for how to fill in duct based on velocity and flow. Um, those are both interesting, but what we are most interested right now is the friction parameter. So we're going to set up a new one based on that. And uh, the way to create a new one is to select one of these. Doesn't matter which. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, just select one of these, uh, duplicate it, and give it an intelligent sounding name. Uh, so we're going to change the color setting to friction. So it's going to read the friction parameter off of ducts. Um, and we're going to change it from by value to by range. And that's going to get rid of a lot of stuff. Uh, the last thing we want to do, just because of the uh, the values we're looking at, they're in the uh, they're small numbers. So we're going to change this from project settings to use three decimal places. Okay, we're set up. So so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get some colors that gives me visual feedback as to the pressure drop, the friction, in my straight lengths of duct. Uh, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to have five colors. I'd like to have one that says your duct is way too small, there's too much pressure drop. One that says um, it's a little too small. Think about bumping it up. I want a color that says you're spot on. I want another color that says eh, it's a little big. It's kind of wasteful, but eh, you can get away with it. Um, and then I want another one that says, look, the duct is just way too big. Drop it down. So um, the way I size ducts, I typically size ducts to 0 0.05 inches of water column per 100 foot of duct. Um, so um, my, my perfect range um, that I'm going to set is going to be between 0 0.045 inches and 0 0.055 inches. Um, and then I'm just going to set the other ones according to that. So, so what I'm looking at is I'm looking at a color for everything that's below 0 0.03 inches, ones that is b between 0 0.03 and 0 0.045, when that's between 0 0.045 and 0 0.055. Um, you get the idea. Um, so we're going to do that in here. Um, and so I'm going to set the first one to, let's see, I believe here, change this to 0.03. Yes. And then um, this is actually the only column you have to change. It's, it's, it's nice. So once I've got that, I'm going to add another one. I'm going to change this value to 0 0.045. I'm going to add another one. D 
default range is not valid. Oh, I think I added too many. That's fine. Here, let's expand this caption so you can see what's going on. So you see, when I added this, it updated the caption to be 0 0.03 to 0 0.045. Um, I don't split range, but default value is not valid. something up here. Awesome video, right? Uh, hang on. Five. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure why I had that little problem there. Um, probably be obvious if I slept more. But at any rate, so I think this is set up the way I want. Point. So this is less than point zero three, point zero three four. This is my spot on. Okay. So the ranges are good. That's what I was going for, despite the little hiccup in the middle. Um, now all I have to do is set the uh, colors to what I want. And you know, this is kind of obvious. The the one that's my sweet spot, let's make that green. Um, this is fine, the purple and that is fine. Um, I'm going to swap these though. I want this one to be orange. Uh, and I want the worst case one to be red because that makes sense. Red is bad. So green for good, purple for meh, and blue for um, it's, it's far too small. So, um, okay, let's apply that. Hit OK. And voila, that's all there is to it. I can now see uh, what's going on with my duct. And if I go to my system inspector, I can get the actual values for that, uh, see what's going on here. So, uh, yeah, looks good. So in the other view, I had a legend. How do we get the legend? Uh, well, that is easy as well. Just go to the Analyze tab. Click Duck Legend, uh, put that wherever you like. And so just in case you forget what values, you can stick that in there uh, so you can see it. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. Um, the last little uh, sort of bonus I guess I'll do is I'll say that uh, one thing I've done with our mechanical template is I've set up specific view templates for uh, this flow analysis type view because you know, I don't necessarily want all my views to look like this. I, I certainly don't want sheet views to have this color fill applied to them. And I don't want all of my working views, um, some of my working views I'm just going to be using as, um, you know, just straight up modeling. I don't want to be distracted by all these goofy colors. Uh, so I have a number of different working view templates. But we can create a default view template so when you want to use this, uh, you can just flash it to any view you have. So uh, I'm just going to duplicate this view. I'm going to call this. Uh, uh, let's see, it's the first floor and it's a working view, and I'm going to call it flow analysis. Uh, analysis. I was homeschooled. Don't worry about it. Um, right, and so to create a view template from this, uh, just go to uh, right click it click some other random things until Revit lets you do what you want and I'm going to say flow analysis friction um, and, I, and I don't think I want to check all these I'm just going to check uh, where is it uh, system color schemes so I'm going to uncheck all these other ones Cool, so uh, we 
can demonstrate this. So if we went back and we changed this to none, so we can sort of pretend that this is just a standard, uh, standard modeling view here. This one mech. Uh, let's say I decided to turn it into a flow analysis. I can just apply that flow analysis view template that I've got. Um, messed it up. Hmm. I didn't. Uh, interesting. This one's fine. I just learned something new today. Or did I? Background. This tutorial is turning into how to troubleshoot Revit. Schema edit. Try flashing into this guy. Oh, there must be some other setting somewhere. I wonder if it's this one. Nope. I changed this to foreground and it popped up. Curiouser and curiouser. But this one's background. I will solve that one later.